You know, the best advice I can give you is welcome to the journey of impeccable character. If you're going to succeed in the profession of arms, it'll be because you continue to work on character. And I don't think it's actually a destination, I think it's a journey that we're all on throughout our career, especially for leaders. For airmen, it starts and ends with character. You know, we are expected to be able to deliver air and space power, and that requires a level of competence that we've got to work towards every day. So that combination of character first and competence is what our nation requires in each of us as airmen. The life cycle of an American airman runs parallel to the airframes they support. First, the parts are found. Let's go, let's go! Hurry up, close the gap! Let's go! Then assembled, then tested until they're reliable and battle ready. In order to be successful, a U.S. Airman is required to master their Air Force specialty code, be in top physical, mental, and spiritual form, and to be an exceptional leader. That process lasts the entire life cycle of an Airman and begins early on during the recruitment phase. Everyone that I've ever talked to, veteran or anything, has always said if I could go back, I would do the Air Force. That's kind of what swayed my decision. It was just kind of the hand uh, interaction with other guys that have had the experience. Uh, teamwork is probably a huge contribution to the Air Force and that's something that I know I need to improve on and especially with my job if I choose to do special operations and I go EOD I know it's one of the toughest jobs and definitely having a team that is trained just as much as you are and the brotherhood and just kind of the connection you have. Developing the right airmen starts with attracting and recruiting the best of those eligible to serve and requires a hands-on approach to getting to know the recruits available. That's the number one benefit of being a recruiter. You get to influence and impact people's individuals' lives. Sometimes we deal with recruits like Thomas. Thomas was an excellent recruit. I think he's going to do excellent in the Air Force. One reason why I like doing this, this job is to influence those guys and to, to really make a difference in their lives. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Just going in kind of as I am now, just coming out of high school, I would hope to see and predict that I would be more disciplined, just uh, just come out, not, I would say more mature. Senator McLeod definitely has made a huge impact as a recruiter. I feel like when I first decided that this was the choice and the path I wanted to take, being a recruiter, he was definitely there for me. And when I got to a point where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and he offered up the special, special operations, it, I'm looking at it now that if I do take that path and I do do really well in it, that looking back it would be a huge impact that he made on my life. Once an airman graduates from basic military training and technical training school, the next phase in their development requires hands-on mentorship and on-the-job training. More so than materials and CBTs, an airman's growth begins at the supervisory level. I think they've always, uh, my supervision's always done a good job of kind of seeing my future before I see it. So they kind of laid out a lot of opportunities for me to get into. They kind of knew when that good time was to kind of take their hands off my steering wheel and just kind of give me the kind of path forward and just kind of let me go down that way. Now looking back at it, yeah, it helped me grow and mature uh, really well and you know, I thank them for that for sure. The time, mentorship, and training in Airmen is an investment. Throughout its existence, the Air Force has strived not only to develop leaders, but to keep them. Today we honor them as graduates from the Community College of the Air Force. In addition to serving Air Force priorities, the Air Force has taken on initiatives, some service-wide and some career field specific, but all with the same objective, increasing a competitive position for hiring top talent. To get those airmen to come in our Air Force, we've got to make sure that we're putting in them in the right job. When we recruit the airmen, we find the best fit for what AFSC that airman can go in. Because if we miss and we put airmen in the wrong jobs that they absolutely hate and that airman does not want to re-enlist, we have several hundred thousand dollars invested in that airman and we want a good return on that investment. And the way we keep in the best, most talented airmen is to make sure that they feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves, make them feel like they're a part of a team, make them feel like they're important. It doesn't matter how much money you pay them or how many benefits you give them. If they, don't, if they do not feel like they're a part of something, they're, they're not going to want to be here.
That feeling of belonging translates back to strengthening joint leaders and teams. Airmen fly, fight, and win in complex domain environments. To do so successfully, leaders and teams must integrate, influence, and lead at any level of joint warfare. Innovation should be something that everybody's looking at on how to be better in the Air Force. It doesn't matter what rank you are. Everybody has great ideas. The youngest airmen in our, in our section may already be, uh, have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or as I've seen, even a PhD. Mm -hmm. I was the same thing. These young people are very innovative. And we need to give them the opportunity to, to open their minds up and the space to, so that they can bring these ideas forward. Going through ALS and then, you know, finally putting the stripe on, I took some time to think back, how was I supervised? What kind of supervisor am I going to be? That kind of thing. And I kind of picked apart and picked out, like, all the things I liked, all the things I didn't like. Present up. Once I had my airmen, I knew exactly. I just, like, I set them down, day one, what are you doing with your life? Whether you're four year, whether you're a career, whether you're six year, especially if your plans are to get out, my number one thing is what are you gonna walk away with that you didn't come in with? The answer to that question is probably the most critical one to airmen transitioning at the end of their careers. I extend my personal thanks and gratitude to you on the occasion of your retirement. The lifespan of an airman allows for frequent opportunities for progression and self-improvement. Though their service will eventually come to an end, the Air Force is still committed to supporting departing members during transitions. I'm proud to be an airman. And when I talk about being an airman, I'm an airman for life. So I spent almost 31 years in the Air Force. And when I retired, I didn't quit being an airman. I presently am on the board for Air University. That's a great experience to still look at uh, PME opportunities for officers and enlisted. I'm also on a special committee for the Secretary of Defense called DAC IPAD, it's the Defense Advisory Committee. So the experiences I had in the Air Force helped me tremendously in getting job opportunities and to do great things that are going to help not only our Air Force, but all people who served uh, were in the cloth of our nation. Plus, when we retire, like I said, we're still airmen. We're still also recruiters. Because everywhere we go, people are going to say, weren't you in the Air Force? Yes, I was. And how was that time in the Air Force? Let me tell you about it.